<laughs> Nigga, wall stars from the boulevards. Yeah, Scam at the scam, can't pull a job. Nah, oh. Shit, the guard is like I'm playing in the bully shawl. Yeah. Money off track. I'm just trying to get my ball back on. Mm. Tell me why I went wrong. That I bought a hoopy that I brought back. See the damages on car mm. See why niggas get their jaw cracked. Right, right. Right. You gave me silver dollar pancake and short stacks. Oh. Yes, yes. What's going on, fight fans? I'm Jake Cotto. Welcome to Jay Cottle's Fight Page. And um, we're going to have a little discussion. You know what I mean? Um, things is going around. Things are happening. Boxing 2016. A lot of expectations. And um, I'm just basically going to drop my thoughts on what 2016 should be about, you know what I mean? I've been dropping these little videos going back and forth on high standards and, you know, what boxers, well, you know, how they're holding themselves up to these high standards, but yet in ring, they ain't performing, doing shit, but they still give themselves all that credit just because they got the win. But, uh, you know, this is how I'm going to begin, man. You know, most people are trying to criticize certain opinions as well as facts on certain fighters. You know, the fighters' careers, you know, that lacks across debate tables and discussions. But the fact remains, the resume is short. You know what I mean? The fighters of today are doing nothing compared to the greats. Okay, some accomplishments that are done today by the young fighters would be done in an instant by the greats of yesterday. Okay. The reason why the greats weren't able to achieve is only because of the privileges fighters have today. In today's boxing world, there is only a number one, there is only a number one pound for pound, all right? But we can't seem, or you can't seem to find them. Everyone always looked to one fighter, but now there isn't one. And if you have your opinion on one, most wouldn't agree and perhaps would lynch you on it. <laughs> Most are biased, okay? And uh, they don't see the fact that the era of yesterday was greater than today's. Most act like a Kylo Ren wanted to be the one, okay? Wanting their fighters to fit in. Wanting them to be on top no matter what. But... If the opposite fighter does what the favorite fighter does and is known to be illegal or not fair, then the lynching begins and the double standards start. When a famous fighter does wrong, we have to check him for it no matter what. One cannot be double standard because the problem of the argument would be the biased, ignorant person condoning the fuckery and actually arguing with you when they themselves know what you're saying is correct, right, and very relevant. Someone with stature says a fighter is using and has and shows no proof or evidence. And most of y'all ran with it and believed it. But now, the same someone who accused has someone in their stable or people in their stable that has now been accused of using with evidence and, okay, most deny the reporter regardless of his honest and hardworking credentials and the fact that he had documents ready to be shown. Most said it was a lie and false. Only because they wanted to see it the way they wanted to see it. People will always want the best for their fighters. But to actually point the finger when you're the real person who was wrong in the first place? Total hypocrisy. Race, fabrication of fighters' careers are not the answer. It's all wrong, okay? All of it. Truth is, most of y'all don't know who to root for. The casuals who 
who swear they are regular. Hardcore, just because of the demographics in today's sports, from winning to making the matches, and all of the politics, most don't know the difference between the legacy fighter and the prize fighter. Let's get into the numbers don't lie routine. Numbers don't lie. But they can if they're manipulated. Time and time again, this is said. But pay-per-view numbers only matter to the people behind the scenes, like the promoters, managers, networks. Not us, the fans, unless you've invested stock within the promotion company. Money doesn't define a fighter. A strap does. Not money. You can't bring the money or pay-per-view numbers into the ring with you. The manipulation of the masses can be done. But only if the consumer buys into the hype. 75% of today's fighters are hype. If not true, then why? Why is it that they don't fight their mandatories? They don't take on the top contenders as well. Why is it they want so many demands and money, but they are a no-show at the fight? Why is it that promoters don't work with other promoters for good fights, especially if they have ranked fighters who have to face each other? Why is it that the boxing fan wants their fighter on top, but yet they don't push them to fight the best in the division, but rather have them fight lesser skilled fighters just to get the W? Why is it that when a fighter starts an agenda, whether it's race or about career, defaults or, or, or rules, they allow this fighter to go on and cater to him. Money machine, perhaps? Or is he just a modern slave? See, y'all should be crying out for that cash cow of a fighter to wake the fuck up. Is it fact that a premier boxer of today that is undefeated is better than the pioneers who define competitiveness within the sport? Because that same premier boxer has said that there was one future face for boxing with Alvarez, but now has put three more in his prophecy. So far, the premier boxer has been wrong. Inactive fighters are gone for a year and a half and are considered pound for pound the best without competing. Other fighters have taken straps. They have done well within the rankings but are omitted because of the dollars generated by the fighter. But then the sport gets deprived. For that, some fighters... just lose and that same fighter to come back after the year and a half and fight a lower ranked fighter and have a lackluster performance still doesn't qualify this inactive fighter to become number one pound for pound or even to still be on that list race has nothing to do with it the top dog and the face of boxing was the prize fighter from Vegas, and he is a black American. He played the race card for his benefit, but now the ignorance has trickled down. You know, the darndest things are said when one is backed into a corner. Example, press conference, Tyson Lewis. Interview Mayweather on his health against Pacquiao, etc., etc. 
We should be standing up for the sport. And for one word to come back. Competitiveness. Without this and the fact that straps do make champions as well as unifications, fighting mandatories, and leaving the voluntaries for off days will definitely make the sport. As well as all promoters should work together alongside a bunch of lawyers who represent their fighters in order to make these big legacy fights that generate money, not money making the fights because we've tried that and we got me pack. Sanctioning bodies need to stop making pennies off these side deals and see that more money can be made and generated legally by fines, etc., etc. Catering to certain fighters will only cause wanted favoritism within the sport, henceforth causing corruption. Yes, every fighter fights for money, but not all fight for legacy. That's a fact, especially in today's boxing world. All is not money, even in the beginning, and no one starts on top. That's what's wrong with today. All reward and no work. Hashtag come back to boxing. God bless. Stay vigilant. Peace. Off that of coffee. Ain't no callbacks or auctioning with Bossman. I lost him with May 20. Staring at the center stage semi. It ain't a drop of lemonade in me. Me for that green, I got a crush like Miss Piggy. I'ma do part two, something Lil Wayne envy. He gon' feel the game friendly all he want. He gon' line for line, trying to beat you to the punch while I beat you to a poke. Orange juice Simpson with the coke. Coke. High star flipping, chopping them white bitches.